Hey guys and girls, welcome to this week's episode of the No BS with Birchie podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Birch, and this is a show unraveling the truth to the facade of the 21st century. We're now exit the matrix and waking up to motherfucking reality. The reality that we're going to talk about today is the property market cycles, and this could apply to anything out there. It could be applied to your beloved cryptocurrencies, it could apply to your gold and silver, it could apply to your share market, it could apply to whatever... Uh, Asset is your favorite go-to vehicle. I don't know why I use the hand signal for a gun, right? The favorite tool, right? I don't know. Maybe it's the, the background of Western Sydney. Who knows, right? But whatever your favorite tool is to invest with and your chosen uh, method of investing, the same things apply. But I want to be specific to property investing today. I'm going to be talking about different parts of the cycle. So you're looking at the property market that we're place with today there's uh, you know i look at it holistically and people always say oh where's the best place to go and invest in and what's the you know the biggest hot spot to invest into and i don't buy into hot spots i don't look at the best place to invest it's all different places to invest i do look at property cycles and i don't believe any of those like clock things that i see out there's like different property clocks 12 o'clock four o'clock three o'clock six o'clock whatever um I, I, I like to look at activity. I like to look at lots of other elements in the in the market. And uh, I look at Australia at the moment and there's probably 10 different property markets that are occurring and there's markets within markets. So if we use Sydney, for example, um, there's some areas of Sydney that are soft. There's some areas that are booming. If we look at uh, Perth, right, everything in Western Australia is booming. doesn't matter. You've got a toilet there, right? But there's risks that it comes with that. Look at the Gold Coast and Brisbane. You could sell a toilet there and it would be really expensive right it's crazy right but if you go back five years ago everyone would have thought that the gold coast was dog shit and perth was dog shit right so there is factors that push to these markets and that's what i err with very major major caution so um yeah we need to look at what's driving those markets and what phase the cycle's in so i've got a little chart thing my team might be able to chuck this up so there's like little quadrants here right so you've got the boom phase you've got the downturn phase you've got the stabilization phase and we've got the up turn phase and yeah, just depending on what sort of quarter of the quadrant that you're sitting at looking you know a market might be up down sideways and the reason why i don't like these charts so much is i'm going to use a suburb on the central coast of new south wales right and uh if you're familiar with the central coast um there's a suburb called the entrance uh, which is on the central coast which i'm very familiar with and there's a suburb called the entrance north which is just over a bridge right it's like if you look at the suburb there's like a kilometer of suburb there's like maybe 500 houses and there was like maybe 20 units or 50 units in there going back in 2008 right and i remember looking at that and there was this massive unit complex that got built in the entrance north and this unit block um the property sold and they were all brand new right so there's massive amount of sales going through like volume and then the prices were like doubled what the old ones were so they're all brand new so they're selling for more so it showed that the market had doubled when the market hadn't doubled around it right because it was just a slice and a slither of data that was being looked at and then over the course of you know three years later the developer went bankrupt and we went in that's what i went to the area and i bought all the units cheap for like 150 200 grand in this area and uh it showed the property market dropped by 50 percent but nothing had happened right it was just one property that was changing all the data for this region so you know data can be skewed in all different ways right i look at data very different i'm a contrarian investor so when i'm looking at the data i'm looking at stuff that's hot and i'm like why would i want to be buying to a market that's doubled or tripled already everybody's running to it right so if we were to look at real time what's happening and i'm going to give you some prognostication and look at markets and talk about things so this could be some tips out there for you guys right um and girls of course um as to how i'm looking and some of the things right so i've talked a lot about extensively about the gold coast and brisbane right i used to buy about 50 properties every month for about seven or eight years in the gold coast for my investors and for myself and then for those properties 
that was when the market was dog shit, right? Dog shit isn't in this market chart that we've got, but you can tell it's the, the downturn phase, right? And people looked at the market in the Gold Coast and said, why would you be buying in there when you know the market's just crashed by 30% or 40% or, or whatever, right? It's like, I don't want to be buying in. It's like going to the Easter show and trying to buy a can of Coke at the Easter show, right? You go to the Easter show and you're buying a hot dog for 20 bucks and you're paying 10 bucks for a can of soft drink, right? But if you go down to the local takeaway, it's three bucks or four bucks, right? So why would you want to be going into a market where everybody's buying and the prices are mo- like I was going to say mooning for all the crypto people, right? The prices are going through the roof, right? And... Why would you want to be up against all that urgency and competition amongst other people, right? And FOMO and fear. I'd rather go to a market which is in dis- despair and no one's playing in that market, right? So I'm looking at the opposite aspect of it because these cycles, they go up and they go down and they go sideways and I've seen them, right? Like over the last, over 20 years, right? As I said on previously, I'm going into my third decade as a property investor. Right? I'm not 30 years an investor, 21, 22 years as an investor. I've seen shit. I've seen all different things that have happened over the years right and it's just waves and cycles that occur but you know i look at perth now i was buying in perth for 130 grand two years ago i was buying in perth for 200 grand in the cbd of perth right remind you i was buying houses in perth in metro like a brick house tile tile roof uh, slab construction like a good solid brick house on six seven hundred square meters for like 220 240 000. no one wanted them right no one wanted this stuff everyone was perth right who wants to be there right but I saw the value and I saw the data. I saw the infrastructure. I saw the push for migration. I saw all of the, the fundamentals push that market. And now we look at Perth and people are paying, you, know, you have an open house, 50 people turn up to the property. Uh, they're, they're paying you know, over the asking price by 50 grand or whatever. Uh, there's waiting lists with real estate agents. And I'm like, that is risk, right? The property the house that used to pay 220 is now five, 600,000. It's tripled. Great. Right. Myself, my investors all made lots of money. People coming in now, they're the one making myself and my investors money because they're pushing the prices up, right? But I'm not actively buying in there. I might buy, instead of buying 40 properties in Perth in a month, I might buy five, right? And that's because the numbers are not working out like they used to and the risk element is not, you know, is, is pushed out on all of the extra stock. So as for the fundamentals, do you want to be buying in there? It's like people are like, where's the hot spot? Or what's the what? You want to see the market go up? You want to, oh, it's gone up for three years in a row. It's going to keep going. It doesn't just keep going up, right? We're looking at Perth now, which is the second most expensive city in Australia, right? We're seeing the, the, the prices being pushed up, the prices of, oh, sorry, we're looking at Brisbane and Gold Coast as the second most expensive city, right? We're looking at the prices in Perth that are outstripping Melbourne, right? We're seeing prices in Perth where you could buy in Sydney I can buy you can buy unit, the cheapest unit in Perth at the moment is probably like 300,000 right in a shit location I can buy in Sydney in a shit location for 300 I can buy in Melbourne for 250,000 for two bedroom units I can buy on all different locations that have much better you know numbers than this right so I look at it and what people don't realize when they're going into these markets is what about what's happening with commodities? What's happening with iron ore? What's happening? What drives these markets? What are the fundamental reasons that drive this? Yeah, you've got a whole pile of people from Sydney that are sitting there watching some news and getting into some chat groups and going, oh, let's go and buy here. It's the best thing. But what happens when the slightest glitch happens no one's ever seen beforehand and we start seeing that, you know, 20% of the jobs are being cut? People that were on 300 grand incomes are now back down to. 150 grand incomes and can't afford properties and they start putting them on the market and you have you know some issues out there right so i like to look at the risk that's being brought to the table i'm okay buying in a risky location if i'm managing that risk by taking the risk off the table if i'm buying it so cheap i can hold it for the next decade because i paid nothing for it right if i'm basing my income on a 300 bucks a week rent and the rent goes to 800 bucks a week idiots go and base their numbers on 800 bucks a week rent when it could be 300 bucks a week rent because everyone's disappeared so we need to be very very cautious of what we're buying and the fundamental, the intrinsic value that's being put into the property. So be very, very conscious of 
the markets that you're buying and I just use Perth I'm not picking on Perth it could have been Darwin 10 years ago it could have been Townsville look at Townsville for example right I was in Townsville right uh, yes I bought everything in Townsville right I bought heaps in the last few years I never talked about Townsville talk about it now because it's it's not really worth you know I'm not in there that much right the the market there I've picked up units for 100 grand. I've picked up units for $75,000 in Townsville. 75 grand for a two bedroom unit, right? 75 grand. People are paying 250 for the same units today, right? That's three years have passed, right? You think you're going to go in there and spend 500 grand on a unit or 500 grand on a townhouse or 500 grand on a house and it's great value? Could have bought that for two years ago for 250. Oh, yeah, but you know, it's gone up, it's got heaps of growth. Well, the people's wages can't afford it, right? The, in, the, the infrastructure, yeah, there's cool, there's lots of things happening there, it's great. But there's lots of things happening in lots of different places as well. And as we go through recessions, right, let's say we look at the chart again and we look at the bottom of a market, we see, you know, take any location. It could be Perth before and could be the Gold Coast, could be Townsville, could be Cairns, right? Things happen, markets dive, things need to boost up their market. So you get the pent up of demand, you're getting all this infrastructure projects, you're getting in all these green energies, you're getting in all the hydrogen, you're getting in all these infrastructure projects which support that market and push it to the next trajectory, which is great. But are you paying at the top of that next cycle or are you buying at the, the bottom of the previous cycle? So I'm looking at how could I shave off all that risk as you change through these market cycles. So for me, I do buy in hot markets, right? But I don't go to a market because it's hot. I don't go to a market because everyone's going there. I look at a market, I'm like, okay, everyone's going there now, right? You're making me money, right? All the people running those markets are bringing you money. You want to be there before the party he starts you want to be able to hand out the lollipops right you want to be taking the cans of coca-cola to the easter show and selling them right you don't want to be the consumer at the easter show buying the can of coke or a bottle of water for 10 bucks right so looking at these markets if you're there before the party starts great right if the market's been crap for 10 years cool right does it mean it's a bad investment because you're paying cheaper i just did a deal today in a capital city like literally right the capital city the cbd um, we paid $400,000 for it and it sold for $470,000 10 years ago or eight years ago, right? So I'm looking at these properties and I'm like, that's good buying. You can't build a new unit in the CBD, two bedroom unit, rent for 600 bucks a week, buying it for $400,000. Um, Brisbane, people go to me, oh, I'll buy me in Brisbane. Like, I bought in Brisbane. I was sending deals to people in Brisbane a year ago, 350000 for a two-bedroom, 10-year-old unit in the CBD, Brisbane City, the suburb name, Brisbane City. Right, those things are all gone up 200 grand now on top. My investors have bought, they pulled out 200 grand equity within three months, six months. You want to be in there before, you know, before these things happen. So... I look at the market cycles and I see, you know, people trying to speculate and they're like, oh, yeah, it's got to be good. It's got to be good. I've heard my friend bought in there a new house and land package over here. It's cheap. It's only $900,000 for a house, right? Crazy. Crazy. And that takes me onto another podcast that I'm going to film because I just thought about a client that I spoke to for the first time yesterday and they asked me about uh, NDIS and my thoughts on NDIS and uh, I'm not going to talk about that in this cycle in this podcast I'm going to make another podcast I'm going to talk about my thoughts on NDIS so make sure you keep an eye out for that one when it comes out because it's going to be fun it's going to be wild and we're we'll talking about all the good and the bad and the juicy parts of uh, buying an, an NDIS property but um, yeah I'm looking at all of the when, when I'm buying a property whether it's in Sydney Brisbane Perth you know Melbourne Adelaide Darwin no, I buy everywhere I buy literally from corner to corner top to bottom right units townhouse villas blocks of units houses whatever right I ain't the guy that sits there and goes oh only houses go up in value most people lose money because they buy houses right I'll buy anything if the numbers stack up and it fits in the strategy I'll buy it I'll buy a shipping container if I have to I'll buy whatever right if the numbers stack up but the numbers must stack up and that's the the whole part of this right so when i'm going into a market i'm looking at migration very important what's happening with migration if there's no migration what's the potential for migration what has happened to similar locations what do ports look like what does um what does infrastructure look like what does 
when I say ports, what does the ability for you know new terminals, new freight routes, you know hubs for you know inland rail, those sorts of things coming to the location? What would that do? What will it do through the construction phase? What like people going? Oh, what about this location or that location? Like that's cool. They're bringing all these people in, but they're going to construct something. It's going to take ten years for a construction project. After the ten years, the job will drop by eighty percent of the workers will disappear and go back to wherever they came from beforehand. So I'm looking at all the fundamentals that are missing from a market and that could be going into a market and talks are going into a market and how much cheaper I can buy in 2024 or 2025 than what I could have paid for the same thing going back five years ago, 10 years ago, three years ago. If, if I'm paying double what it sold for a year ago, it's not really what I want to be buying into. If I'm paying triple, you don't, I don't pay triple. Right? I ain't paying triple what some person, to say a bad word, some person paid a year ago, I'm not paying triple, right? You, you're setting yourself up for failure. So understand the fundamentals in that market. Understand what people's salaries are doing. Where's the income being derived from? What are the migrants doing? Is there lots of, you know, we've got locations in, in Australia and I see it, right? I see all the people going, oh, hanging shit on the location. And I'm like, no, they're bringing migrants in. You don't even realize the amount of migration that's going to happen to certain locations over the next few years. And they'll just absorb, like the property will vaporize they will literally vaporize right oh I remember I could buy a property for $200,000 there now it's $500,000 I remember when the rent was only two hundred fifty, and you couldn't give this shit away right uh, you can't pay under 700 bucks a week worth of rent now right so what are the fundamentals what are the drivers what's happening on the ground in those locations what's happening with shops what's happening with businesses what's happening with hipsters with shaved fringes and hairy armpits right what's happening with you know the demographics of the people that are changing the culture to the environment what's happening with the ex-housing commission area and I don't buy much housing commission the housing commission doesn't sell much anymore but um, what's happening with the location where you've got um, you know a specific sort of migrant population going to it and revamping and everyone wants to congregate in that spot right these areas boom right uh, there's areas in Sydney that I've seen happen in 2024 which have gone up 30 percent right you ain't seen that on the news right but I've seen it with my own eyes I've seen the rents go up almost double right because I've put the rents up double right um, so yeah you need to look at lots of drivers lots of metrics right but don't just go for the if it's in the news it's already happened if it's boomed it's boomed you don't want to be speculating on that there's there's a you're gonna blow your fingers off right you're gonna blow your fingers and toes off you don't do that so um yeah look at the the fundamentals of what's driving look at you know if some idiot paid 400 grand for a property 10 years ago and you can buy it for 200 grand in 2024 well all you got to do is wait for that market to turn around and look like it did when the idiot came and paid 400 grand and it's written in the cake um then the numbers are done right if the rent's positive cash flow if it's below rebuild cost if the people that are living in the location are earning 100 grand a year and the property's 200 grand to purchase it's like wow like the the fundamentals could support that thing at 500 grand or 600 grand or whatever right but when you go into an area and everything's doubled tripled quadrupled in a short period of time the chance of it doubling again is off the table the chance of it going down is it's stacked against you so just be very very careful with what you're buying in the market so um that's how I assess the markets. That's how I look and put my data in. I look at all the data. I'm not looking at data that's happened. I'm looking at data that's real and it's happening. Uh, if a market, the data that you have when it comes to RP data or call logic or wherever you want to call it that you get your, your data from, you're looking at old data. Land and title registries don't happen immediately. They don't get published immediately. It might be a six-month lag, might be a three-month lag, and you can't see what's happening. You can't see that, you know, you need to look at what's happening on realestate.com, right? If all the properties are giving price reductions, if the rents are sitting there and giving one week free rent, two weeks worth of free rent, like you need to know that market intimately. You need to have, you know, the heart, lungs, respiratory system breathing with that market to know, okay, yeah, it's, uh, you know, this is happening here, this is happening here. If there's no stock for rent, 
right? And the rents have gone up 200 bucks a week. Well, then that's going to have a flow on effect to the stock because people go oh, buy instead of renting and then you start seeing the stock dry up and you see every second property is under contract and then they used to sit there with price reductions and now there's no price reductions and the new stock coming in the market's coming in the market for $100,000 more than what it was selling for three months ago. Well, there's a few little bits of stock left. We can grab those bits of stock and then, you know, they all just get sucked up in the vortex, right? So... There's lots of data inputs that I look at, which are manual. You can't set an app, you can't set a program, you can't get AI, you can't get any of these things. It's real research that you need to be looking at in the markets and the data and, and all that. So I'm cautious on lots of markets out there. I reckon 80% of the markets in Australia scare the shit out of me with speculation that's happening in them. Um, so just buy with caution. Um, understand, you know, what's happening out there um be a, a contrarian investor buying the stuff that's you know on sale you buy the stuff on sale it's springtime now right we're going the summer t-shirts on sale uh, t-shirts are expensive jumpers are on sale right two months ago hats were on sale and jumpers were full price right i bought these cool shorts right i bought their like cool shorts i don't even know i think they're called a brand or some shit right i bought them they're 150 bucks a pair of short then there was a 50 percent sale off then i saw i had to take something back to a shop and saw that they were sitting on the corner and they were like uh, discounted like they were like 20 bucks and i was like fuck i'll take the whole rack right i bought all of them right because they were great value right and it's summer again it's only been three months months right it's been three months i've worn shorts every day i wear my thongs every day right but um if you're in new zealand you watch this i mean my shoes my sandals my thongs uh, feet thongs not the undie thongs right but um be cautious of the markets understand you know what season are we in can you be waiting out for that season should you be waiting out for that season Australia is not one market, right? There's areas in Sydney where properties are booming today and there's properties that are falling. There's markets that are moving, like if you look at Melbourne, for example, has been in decline and the Gold Coast has been blowing up. You've got Perth blowing up, right? So understand that there's different markets, different segments of the markets, different capital cities. There's regional towns, there's cities within cities, there's you know demographics to certain cities. You need to understand what is that market that you're dealing with with and where are the cracks in those markets and where can you get in there and grab all the stuff whilst it's on sale that's what you want to be doing as an investor so if you need help on any strategies or want help finding the properties i want to i run a buyer's agency uh be invested um started the buyer's agency about 15 years ago there was no such thing as a buyer's agent out there back then people used to go well you want to pay me you want me to pay you to find a property like that's what i do i buy properties that are below market value you pay me a fee i make you wealth because I'm buying you things cheaper than the market and whatnot so been running a buyer's agent there was no other buyer's agents out there back in the day uh, but there is lots of buyers agents out there now so I don't need, explain, don't need to explain what to do but I've been doing it for a long time if you need help on identifying the markets researching these markets getting the properties below market value getting your foot in the door like you rock up to an agent they're like oh yeah I want to buy a property it's like don't worry it's already sold to Nathan or someone else right like if you need help getting into these markets it can help you reach out to us one 367 925 hit us up at admin at beinvestor.com.au if you like this video leave a comment um, share it with your friends and family it goes a long way so thank you very much and make sure to subscribe apple play google play spotify and youtube every thursday catch up soon have a great week bye